Hey guys and welcome back to Exploitable. In this video we'll be talking about a program called MMAP. MMAP stands for Network Map and is essentially a reconnaissance tool that can create useful entry points into a device. By entry points I mean ways into a device. For example if a device had port 80 open then we'd know there's a web server being hosted on that endpoint or 443. Anyway without any further ado let's jump straight in. So for those of you that may have noticed, I am running Kai Linux. This is my favorite um, pen, pen testing distribution, I guess. Uh, I've tried all the others, such as Parrot OS and Backtrack. If you don't know how to install Kai Linux, I do have a video that I made about two years ago, uh, which basically goes over how to flash the image onto a USB drive using DD. Um, but that's for Mac, right? So um, it is actually easier to install Kali on Windows. You just need Rufus, get the ISO, and just flash it for USB using Rufus. It's a free tool. I can leave a link down in the descriptions, but uh, description. But um, it's relatively easy to uh, Google and download. Okay, so end map. Nmap is installed by default on Kali and, and all the rest I just said, uh, but if you don't have it and you do have the apt package manager, you can just go uh, sudo, sudo apt uh, install um, and nmap. Uh, there are a bunch of other package managers uh, which do have nmap installed, and I did my password wrong. There are several package managers which have nmap um, but I'm sure you can find them just by googling your package manager and going uh, install nmap. You can also en install nmap on Mac um, and even Windows I think. Um, there are a few tools that I'll be going through in the future though which you can't actually install on um, Windows or probably Mac as well. Um, some are purely for Linux. Uh, that's why it makes Linux so powerful. Okay, so you can firstly go to the help page just by specifying nmap tech h. Once you go nmap tech h, you'll get to this overly overwhelming page with um, all the commands and everything it can do. Um, you've got OS detection, um, service, you can discover services, um, there's so much you can do with nmap, um, but in this video we'll We'll keep it fairly straightforward. Um, it may be worth noting I am actually on my mobile hotspot. Uh, so I do have currently a network that I can just play around with, right? I'm not going to be scanning my neighbor's Wi Fi or anything like that. Um, it's simply just going to be my own stuff that I'm really testing against. So um, what I'm going to do here is just go sudo and map ss which is a, basically a, a bug standard scan and I think my IP address is 172. Uh, let's check so if I go fconfig I'll basically get my um, ethernet uh, loopback and uh, WLAN 0 so in the top eth0 that's basically my ethernet which is the back of my computer um, loopback 127001 you may have heard of the phrase there's no place like 127001 just home or yourself so that phrase there's no place like home right um, you also have WLAN uh, wireless LAN is basically my um, little Aetheris adapter um, it's just Wi-Fi essentially it's all it is connected to my network um, so there's my IP address there, that's why we came here. So 127, uh, 172 2010. 172.20.10. And what I'm going to do actually, um, I'm going to assume uh, the f my mobile sitting on one. Um, I'm assuming that because all, net or all routers uh, do actually sit uh, generally on the first um, or the first IP of, of the subnet so there's a subnet there if 
I can highlight like, the 10, um, and we've got the 1 afterwards. So basically, we're the first in that subnet. It may be hard for people to um, comprehend if you don't really understand networking yet, but yeah, you can have different subnets. Uh, companies do tend to uh, split them apart uh, and have firewalls in between them. So uh, you'd have all your f mobile phones, maybe like, because uh, these can go up to 255 uh, on some, or well, most uh, subnet masks. Um, but essentially, uh, you'd have mobile phones on the 10 subnet, then you'd have on the 11 subnet, you'd have servers and, and so on. Anyway, so um, we can see I am actually unable to get my host name, which is strange. Uh, host name for this would be C41X. Um, that was it, it's an iPhone X, and my cow, it's a little naming convention I made. Um, but essentially what we can see here, we have a few ports open, um, and a few interesting ones too. We have uh, iPhone Sync, which is on a weird port, 62078 uh, TCP. Um, now that would probably be the iTunes port. Um, so typically, uh, well, it's that feature on iTunes, right? You'd have, um, you'd basically be able to sync over Wi-Fi. So when you plug your phone into iTunes, for those that have an iPhone, <laughs> um, you can tell it to sync over Wi-Fi um, with your computer backup or whatnot. There's also FTP open. That's odd. So there's an FTP server running on the iPhone for some reason. Not too sure why that is. Um, and domain 53. Uh, now, obviously the iPhone would be quite secure. People may um, disagree. <laughs> um, but this gives us an indi indication of, of ways in. So maybe the iPhone sync service was um, was vulnerable, right? We don't necessarily know. We know, um, for example, our IP address, which is down here. And I'm pretty sure I have an Apache server or a web server on this right now. So what I'll do, oh, let's just switch to level five. So all ports are closed, but what if I just open Apache 2, oh, oops, service. Yeah, what if I open this and scan it again? Um, so do that again. There you go. Now I've got a um, web server open. That's listing on port 80. So what I can do with this is just boot up uh, this and just local host, and there you go. So I now basically have a web server. Now, sorry for those that are a bit confused of what I've just done there. Local host, uh, all that loop back is I've just basically pointed to myself. Uh, so I've just scanned myself there. Um, I can achieve the same thing just by uh, putting this into the Chrome browser. Uh, it will get the same um, result. Uh, I think this is like a test page for Apache. So yeah, that gives you a basic understanding of what MMAP does, or at least the service part of it, right? Um, now, I'll probably make a, a future video where I go across the advanced part, um, where we scan for specific ports, specific services. Uh, for example, if you wanted a domain controller, right, uh, you might want to scan for 389 for LDAP or 636 LDAPS. Um, you can really get a good understanding of what's on your network. Maybe you forgot an IP address or something. Uh, maybe you want to see where your Raspberry Pi is, uh, that kind of thing. Now, most of that, again, is, is just in the help page. You, if you want to play around, you can just dig through this help page and see what all the bits does, obviously, um, on your own network. But you may have actually, well, you may not have noticed, but um, what I've done now is basically plugged in that uh, Ethernet. Um, so I'm going to be using a different adapter um, or different device in this case. Um, but I've turned off that Wi-Fi device, hence why it's not over here. Um, and I now have a 192.168.1.40 address. Now, I just wanted to give a good indication of what a normal network was to look like. So what I'm going to do is actually just go sudo nmap sl. 
Now, SL... Uh, ah, hang on. I'm just going to grep that. MMAP. Um, H. Now, we can pipe output. Uh, probably a bit too far, but uh, just with this little pipe, this, this icon here is pipe. It basically means it's going to chuck whatever the result of this is, it's going to pass this side. So what I'm going to do here is pipe this into uh, grep, which is basically um, pull a specific word or a specific line which contains this word. So we're finding a word in the output. Um, so in that help menu, I want to grep um, L because I want to find what this means. That's a really quick way of scanning through help menus, um, and yeah, it's a pretty cool way. So what I'm going to do is just go again, sudo nmap uh, sl, and now I can tell you that this is a list scan. So simply list targets to scan. It basically just puts them all in a huge list with host names if it can find them. And 192.168.0.0, .0 dot or was it dot zero nope it was dot one dot star or we can go one dot one with the subnet mask on the end i'll probably not overcomplicate it just yet though i'll just put a star there and it's going to want a password and what that's going to do is chuck a report for everything so you can see i have a scan re report for an acquire hub uh, i've got a remote lounge whatever lounge is I've got my um, my device here I've got my iPhone I've got a Mac um, and I've got my router so you may now get have like an understanding of, of why I have C41 in all my devices so if we combine that with grep uh, oh, grep C41 you'll now be able to see, when it loads, all of my devices. So I can be on a completely like random network, use that command, and hey look, I have everything that is mine. Maybe worth noting, uh, just on a final note, that this will be a series. So the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to explain all the tools I'll use in a CTF, and uh, go pretty in depth about them too. Um, or to what extent is actually needed for the CTF. Um, so we'll start on beginner CTF. So, sorry, for those that don't actually know what CTFs are, they stand for capture the flag. And it's basically where, um, or from a hacker's perspective, you go and break into a system and you steal files, right? Um, so you get key one, key two, key three, once you've got all keys, um, then you'll have one essentially so that's the aim and this video now was really just an introduction um, and nmap is fairly basic hence why it's a fairly short video but i will be making videos on more interesting and um, i guess dangerous tools too um, obviously against my own network but they will all lead um, to a CTF at the end. Um, there is one CTF that I do have in mind at the minute. Um, it is a very basic one and hence why I'll really only be going um, through the basics of tools to get that running. Um, like for example there's a WordPress site in there um, and today uh, if you know we need nmap to discover the WordPress site it's, it's going to be listening on that port, port 80. So yeah the, that's really the, the concept I had in mind and I hope you like it. Thanks everyone for watching if you do find this sort of content useful uh, and interesting rather um, please feel free to drop a like subscribe and I will be doing more videos in the future. Thank you.